When I first started this series, I had one very simple goal in mind. Find the absolute worst pieces of cinematic history that also end up being one of the greatest things you ever watch. Films such as The Amazing Bulk, Joshua and the Promised Land, Maximum Impact, After Last Season. Some of these were charming, some of these were just downright awful. But then one day everything changed. After sharing my episode on After Last Season onto Facebook, I got a comment with a trailer. A trailer for a film called Fateful Findings. Before I pressed play, I did not realise that I was opening the cinematic equivalent of Pandora's box and stepping into the world of Neil Breen. This will not be a review like the usual episodes. This will be an adventure where we try and discover the man behind the myth or the myth behind the man. Why Neil Breen feels the need to make certain choices in his filmmaking. The political overtones, the massive influence of artificial intelligence and the element of the supernatural. And most importantly of all, where will he go next? My name is Patch. Welcome to Patch Flicks. This is Neil Breen. The year is 1958. Amongst other things, it was a year of invention. Things such as the microchip, the hula hoop, NASA. All of these came into being in this prosperous year. But on the 23rd of November, something else came into being, unknown to the rest of civilization. On the 23rd of November, 1958, Neil Breen was born. Hi, this is Neil Breen. Uh, good to see you all again. It's uh, August 6, 2018, and I'm here to tell you about my new feature film, Twisted Pear. Oh. I've invented an invisible shield device using satellite lasers, which I can hide objects in a small area so that I can stay in a location for some time without being found. I disappear. I become invisible. You killed him. I can't believe you committed suicide. I cannot believe you committed suicide. How could you have done this? How could you have committed suicide? Thanks again uh, for all your independent film support. Um, I'll talk to you later. Thank you. So, the collection of clips you just saw there are from Neil Breen's five feature-length films. No doubt you've already made a plethora of different observations in regards to his style, the way he frames his shots, the special effects, and all the various bits and bats. But don't worry, we're going to cover everything. 
When doing the research for this video, I didn't really want to sit through all these five films on my own. I thought this seemed like the opportunity to integrate some of my friends, the people you've already seen on the channel, into the Patchflix team. At first, they were really excited about it. By the end of it, not so much. I would probably say that traumatised is the correct term. But Patch, I hear you ask, surely, surely they can't be that bad. I mean, After Last Season was the worst film of all time and nothing could beat that. Well, yeah, that's pretty true. But this is a different kind of bad altogether. If you think about people such as Tommy Wiseau and the reasons why he's so popular, then you'll start to understand the magic of Neil Breen. Despite the low levels of production, he takes his work very seriously. And despite never going to film school. Oh, by the way, yeah, I should probably point that out because it's quite an important point. He never went to film school. He's actually an architect, of all things. He self-funded all of his films through his architect business. And to be honest, I find that quite a respectable quality. He's obviously very passionate about creating movies and the whole cinematic universe, as I like to call it. But he kind of takes it just a little bit too far in certain cases, which we will explain throughout the course of this video. So we may as well start at the very beginning. We're going to go back to 2005 with the release of Breen's first film, Double Down. So here is the opening segment of Double Down. Unfortunately, I've had to pitch shift the audio, because Neil does not like to use royalty-free stuff, and I don't want more copyright strikes, thank you very much. Otherwise, this remains completely unedited. Enjoy. My name is Aaron Brand. I always thought I was doing the right thing in preparing for life. I was the first in my class in college in computer science. I joined the military and became a fighter pilot and won many medals for distinguished service. I've always lived between this world and the other. I'm now a covert agent, a mercenary for any nation that wants to control another. the love of my life when I was seven and stayed with her forever. We loved each other and we're getting married. I joined my country's secret strategic support branch of the Defense Intelligence Agency to fight terrorism around the world and became the best agent they ever had. I developed a way to control any computer or satellite the government had. The fact that I became so individually, electronically powerful scared my government as well as others. It was that power that caused them to assassinate my fiance and break my heart forever. It caused me to reevaluate what I was doing for my country and that maybe other countries would be interested in my services. After all, I controlled access to the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. I control access to anything and everything, even from my little simple, brilliant setup.
My girlfriend and I always wanted to have children, and now all of that's been taken away from me. I work as a freelance agent now for many countries, making millions of dollars on many various covert assignments. I've been giving away the money to children's support charities all over the world, orphanages, hospitals, and schools, and to support the evacuees of natural catastrophes all over the world, like hurricanes, like Katrina. I can do better for them than most mismanaged and dishonest governments can. My orders from another country are to shut down the Las Vegas Strip for two months. So, yeah, that's Double Down. Why don't we check in with the Patchflix team and see how they're doing at the moment? Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, please don't hate me. So, what is Neil Breen's first ever movie all about? From what I can tell, he is Aaron Brandt, some genius hacker government conspiracy nut who has all the countries in the world all afraid of him because of his superior hacking skills. And at one point, he seems like he's a bioterrorist because he's poisoning the rivers of Las Vegas or something. But then he says that he's stopping a bioterrorist attack. And then, then he says he's the cause of it. And then he says he's going to stop it. And then the film ends. So this terrorist attack doesn't actually happen in the entire film and you're left confused and this is one of the points I want to bring up about Neil Breen as a filmmaker and granted this doesn't happen in every single one of his films but it is quite a common theme throughout most of them essentially there will be part of a plot a problem or something like a terrorist attack for example in Double Down it is alluded to throughout the entire movie but it doesn't happen it's never shown on screen it's just always hinted at and blah 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 but it just never happens i've never known a filmmaker spend 90 minutes of a movie alluding to a massive plot point at the end for it to not happen it's just bizarre i i I can't explain it you know we get at least 60 minutes of narration from neil breen going over the same stuff about how his wife was killed and how he's the greatest and all the countries in the world are all afraid of him but we don't get the actual payoff for the plot Is he going to cause the attack? Is he going to stop the attack? Whose side is he really on? Who should we be rooting for? Now, I'm willing to look the other way on some of this stuff because obviously it was his first film. It was his first attempt at crafting his Breeniverse and it's not going to be perfect. But, you know, this is a video about his choices as a filmmaker, so I have to include everything. Another thing that Double Down is guilty of is reusing footage. Now, it's sometimes it's not exactly the same footage, but it's like alternate takes of the same footage. There is a scene where he runs up and down this mountain out in the Mojave Desert. And I'm not kidding, he must run up and down this mountain in the desert about a hundred times throughout the film. And it's literally like every second scene is him either running up the hill or down the hill. And however many times he's woken up next to his car and seen a message in blood written on it, like, are they alternate takes? I mean, fair enough, you want to pad the film out just to get that 90 minute runtime. Don't refilm the same stuff over and over again. But as I say, this was his first film. Maybe he could rectify a lot of this in his second film. Maybe he will have taken that next step towards Hollywood success. Or maybe he will have just gotten a whole lot more ridiculous. With Neil's second film, the rule book was thrown out of the window. And we start to see the beginnings of what is a blatant God complex. As Neil truly takes on the role of a lifetime. As with the last film, I'll show you the intro sequence. I have edited it down just slightly, just to save a bit of timing, because there's a lot of very dragged out shots, and I've replaced the audio for something a bit more pleasing on the ears, and also not copyrighted. I'm fairly confident that by the end of this sequence, you will already have a grasp of what I was saying in regards to the God Complex. This is I Am Here, dot, 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 now.
disappointed in your species. The human species. Dear Lord, that was a lot to take in. Even for me. Uh, guys? Are you okay? Come on now, it's not that bad, is it? Sorry. Okay, 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 okay. Let's let's take our time here and let's try and process everything that we've just seen. So first of all, God complex. He thinks he's Jesus. Not just Jesus. Cyborg zombie alien Jesus. That's not even an exaggeration. I promise you it's not. Seriously. You know, he's got the lab coat to signify Jesus' white cloak that he's always depicted as wearing. He's got the holes in his hands and feet from the crucifixion. He's got a couple of sticks of ram up his wrists to signify that he's a cyborg, as well as a, an old motherboard, like, sellotapes to his chest. I assume it's sellotape, it might be blue tack. I don't know, we can only guess at this point. And then the weird, bloody, grudge-like mask. I, I have no explanation for this. Maybe he went to the local costume shop and it was in the bargain bin. I don't know. It's just, it's, yeah. And as his opening line suggests, he's disappointed with the human species. Because yes, that's right. He is God. He created humanity. Not just humanity, but other species on other planets as well. We are going full interstellar with this adventure. So what does our Lord and Saviour, Mr. Neil Breen, have in store for us in this adventure? Well, he's here to slay humanity and start over. So again, we're a bit unsure whether or not he's the hero or the villain, because yeah, he's the main character and blah blah blah, his intentions are probably good, but he's on about like killing millions and millions of people. That's not good. But as I said, this is the true birth of his god complex. We got hints of it in Double Down, of him being this character that is better than everyone else. He is above everybody else. He has the skills and the power above all else in the world. The only difference is this time he's gone from being a super hacker to being God. Literal God. The highest of the pecking order. And you'll see in the rest of the films that he plays a similar character. Not only that, but not to be ageist or anything, but at the time that these films were being made, he was in his early to mid 50s. And his love interests are always a good 20, 30 years younger than him. Like even in Twisted Pair, the latest film, he's 60. And his love interest in that could be mistaken for being in their early 20s. Which is kind of creepy. And we'll get the perfect example of that later in this film. And believe me, it involves the alien mask. But I will warn you now, it is not a pretty sight. Picture this. You and Neil Breen. You're halfway through the production of your second film. And the next scene you have to do is a lovemaking scene. Which is already mega awesome for you because you've got this attractive young female to work the scene with. But there's a lot of pressure. You've really got to nail this scene. Almost as good as you've got to nail this woman, am I right? And just how will Neil Breen manage to do this? By laying completely motionless on top of the lady and staring at her. And then putting the alien mask on and staring at her completely motionless. How that lady kept a straight face throughout this entire scene, which goes on for longer than it should do, I will never know. She deserves an Oscar. And then at the very end, as she wakes up from being passed out from all that raunchy lovemaking, she looks up and see him just slowly backing out of the room while staring at her. Because that's what you do when you are God and you have sex with a mortal and... Well, I say sex, I mean you just lie on top of her and stare at her whilst putting a mask on and off. Neil Breen logic, everybody. 
Other highlights of the film include a wheelchair-bound old man being cured of cancer and Benjamin buttoned back to his early 20s just to be able to take a girl out on a date, lots of boring shots of corrupt politicians and bank owners and various people like that discussing their evil schemes, but there are a couple of highlights for me and I would like to share them with you right now. This first one, a particular favourite of mine, we get some lovely shots of American suburbia with some lovely music in the background, which keep randomly cutting to blood being poured out all over the desert. Then we find out that there is a man being tortured there. It's not very clear who he's being tortured by. It turns out it's Neil Breen. But I'm just going to play the scene for you now because commentating on it is not going to do it justice. You just have to see it for yourself. Enjoy. No! Don't cut out my ears! No! 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 Don't cut out my hands! And last but not least, there is a fantastic scene of torture in which this gang of criminals captures one of the characters and decides to beat him to death. Again, talking about it's not going to do any justice, so here it is in all its glory. We trusted you like a brother! Kill him! wasn't part of our deal. No payoff is worth this. I don't want any part of this. I like what I see. And as the film comes to a close, it turns out he wasn't here to like wipe out all of humanity or whatever it was he suggested at the start. He was actually just going to kill these random criminals by crucifying them in the desert because if you didn't know already, he's Jesus. And then he leaves the planet because he's satisfied with his slaughter. Nice one, Neil. Okay, two films in, another three to go. That's going to be it for part one of this series. Originally, I did intend on making it one feature length video, but I figured people might not want to sit and watch me ramble on about Neil Breen for like an hour, an hour and a half, so I thought I'd split it up into sections. It makes more sense, and plus makes things a bit easier for me. So uh, thanks for watching. If you've watched this so far, uh, I've put more work into this than I've ever put into anything related to YouTube so I'm really really proud of it I hope that you like it and I hope you'll stick around for the next part where we'll delve into the next couple of films here's a little sneak peek of what to expect from these little treasures Please stop. You can't do this. Please don't do it anymore. You're going to stop. You 
can't do this anymore. Thanks again, like, share, subscribe and all that bollocks, and I'll see you next time. See you later.